How's it going guys? My name is Long Barrel and welcome back to how to be a better CSGO player. In the last episode we talked about being a better rifler and I promise that in the next video we'll be talking about being a smarter rifler. As you can see I scrapped the idea and instead decided to talk about being a smarter player in general as I feel like the tips I'm about to provide you with can be applied to any role, position and situation. We got a lot of things to talk about so let's get started. To describe how smart an individual player is depends a lot on the amount of game sense they have. Talking about game sense is really hard as developing your game sense can only come from experience and no matter how many tutorials you watch, you won't get any smarter unless you play, play and play. So that's why I'm not going to attempt to teach you guys game sense but instead I'm going to provide you with a series of things to focus on while playing which in the process will help boost the expansion of your in-game intellect. Before the round begins, make sure you figure out what role slash position you're going to play that round and let everybody on your team know what you're up to. For instance, if you're planning on running long A on Dust 2, let everyone know that you're going to entry frag long so hopefully your team can set up around your play. Securing a certain role slash position early in the game will ensure that no possible conflicts between positions can occur as a distribution of roles has been established. Now in the following rounds, it is crucial that you don't change your initial decision of playing a specific role. You want to stay consistent with what you're doing within your team to prevent clashing and confusion between the players. For example, if you said you want to entry, don't just randomly switch to lurking mid-game. Although it's just a pug, having consistency within the team will allow you to create default positions which aid in the establishment of control and order within the team. Be aware of your teammates position slash roles, so in the case of them needing support or a simple pop flash, you'll be ready to react. Map awareness is a skill which I feel not everybody can confidently say they have. What is it? It is the ability to visualize the map in a 4D sense. In other words, the ability to anticipate your opponent's actions at a perfect place in time. This is what separates the skilled players from the mediocre ones. In this case, time is the fourth dimension within the map. Now, I'm not talking about the ticking score clock, no, I'm talking about our good friend timing. Timing alone is responsible for a lot of broken peripherals. How many times were you caught with your knife out or a flash or a smoke and got killed because you weren't anticipating an enemy? You got screwed over by your good friend timing. To know timing requires a deep understanding of the game. This skill is usually attained with hours and hours of playtime, but don't worry, you can still practice it. To understand how timing can affect game early in the rounds, you can time yourself racing to keep positions around the maps and see who gets to each position first, the T's or the CT's. Having this kind of positional knowledge will yield in you being more aware of where the enemy could be and when they could peek. I also recommend learning all of the common spots around the maps so that there's a less chance of you getting caught by surprise. Additionally, to understand mid slash rate round timing, you have to constantly stay conscious of everything that's happening around you. As you're playing, always keep a mental thought of the possible positions the enemy players might be. Not only that, maintain the awareness of your teammates and what they're up to. For example, you realize that 4 of you guys are sitting in A main on cash with one player lurking in B main. To be aware of your positioning means to recognize the possible move of the enemy and always stay one step ahead of them. In this case, to realize that you might get flanked from squeaky or mid main, take the initiative and watch flank as your team sets up for an A take. As you're playing, continually ask yourself where the enemy could be, where they couldn't be, could they be flanking, could they be stacking or boosting. All these things you should be asking yourself as you're playing. You'll find yourself getting caught out less, not dying early, and potentially even getting more kills. Quick tip, if you're unsure about something or missing key information, never call it with 100% certainty. How many times did your teammate call all 5 players in one location and you get killed by a lurker on the other side of the map? These kind of skills come with time and develop along with your game sense. The idea of playing smart is all about outsmarting your opponent and making them make the mistakes. What better way to do that than to fake them out? The idea of faking is to make the opponent think you're going to do one thing while you're about to do something completely different. One of the most common fakes found in CSGO is fake planning slash defusing. If you ever find yourself clutching, you can tap the bomb to make the opponents think you're planning slash defusing. This will make them peek thinking you're vulnerable while you're already waiting for them. Another way to fake out your opponents is to throw a smoke or a flash over the opposite side of the map, making the enemy think you're coming from one location while in reality you're in a completely different place. Faking your reload is also a thing. Pretend to reload your weapon, but instead of going through the animation, cancel it. Hearing you reload, they're gonna push you and fall right into your trap. Fake flashing is a technique used to make the enemy stupidly turn around. You can fake a flash by throwing a decoy or a pistol in an obvious spot to make the enemy think they're about to get flashed. Last but not least, you can use the sounds of your in-game environment to manipulate your enemy. 
For example, you can pretend to jump off of heaven on the map cache by simply jumping on the spot to make the enemy think you're not up there anymore. If they fall for it, that's an easy kill for you. Our smart players should know how the in-game economy works. If you put your enemy in a weak economical state, then you'll put yourself at an advantage going into the round. You want to learn how to read your enemy's economy. The best way to start is to understand money distribution. On the screen you see a chart of all possible money situations that can happen in-game. Knowing this can help you keep track of your enemy's situation and with that you'd be able to read them. For example, you know your enemy's on an eco. You tell your teammates to play passive and stick together so you don't give up the advantage to your enemy. Another example is knowing that your opponent's economy is low, so getting rid of any possible rifles out of their hands will yield in a rebuy, therefore weakening their money. In that case, telling your teammates to set up for exit frags may be more beneficial than attempting a retake. Another way of being smart with money is making decisions that could potentially put you in an economical disadvantage. Part of it is knowing whether or not to hunt the saving opponents. Always ask yourself if it's worth the risk of using your rifle, armor, and equipment. Assess the situation. Is your money low? Could your teammates buy you? Would it mean your team wouldn't be able to force in the round following the next one? You shouldn't be asking these questions exclusively in those situations. In fact, you'll find yourself asking the exact same questions when deciding what to do in an eco round. Being smart about what you buy is all part of managing your economy. For example, force buying this round might mean you won't be able to buy an op next round or you won't have enough utilities. Be smart about how you spend your money because it could come back and haunt you. Lastly, learn to exploit different equipment in order to strengthen your economy. For example, buying SMGs against an eco round is very beneficial as you'll be rewarded with $600 per kill. Additionally, should you go down and give up the SMG, it's not a big blow as most SMGs are cheap as dirt. Shotguns are a bit more tricky as they are a bit more expensive and a little harder to use, but the reward capability goes up to $900 per kill, get a nasty 3k and you'll be sitting at 2700 additional dollars. If you're in a low economical state, the Zeus is a great way to steal a rifle off of an enemy. Costing it just $200 and with one hit capability, it's a great asset to use during crucial eco rounds. Last but not least, whenever you get a chance to go for the knife, do it. Not only that it's a great confidence booster, you also get a juicy $1500 added to your bank. So far, we've talked about the skills which may not necessarily depend 100% on you. Self-discipline, on the other hand, can only be demonstrated by your dear self. Similarly to aim, this is the only skill I feel that you can practice to achieve consistency. Self-discipline is a combination of your ego, patience, and mentality. Having the skill of knowing when it's smart to peak, to fall off, go for the kill, etc. is all part about being a smart player. To practice a skill, the first thing that must go is your ego. Your ego may lie to you and make you overconfident in some situations. I'm not saying it's bad to have confidence, I'm just saying that having too much confidence may sometimes cost you your life and put your team in a disadvantageous position. Ego fragging is one of the biggest reasons why NACS receives so much criticism. A lot of NA teams are guilty for making irrational decisions such as overpeaking or going for one-on-one -on -one battles which end up going badly for them. Your ego is very deeply connected to your patience. Having patience is hard, we all know that, is the reason why we push through smokes, rush positions, overextend. That's why it's very important to train your patience so you don't make irrational decisions. Training your patience starts with slowing down your play. If you look at any professional team, you'll notice how everything is played out super slowly. The key is to make the enemy team impatient and make them make the mistakes. As you're playing, if you ever feel an itch to push or move in, make yourself just wait a few more seconds and fight the urge to do something stupid. People that are patient have the ability to withstand constant repetitions of frustrating activities. You can use this knowledge to train your own patience, for example by playing surf or b-hop maps. With each attempt to beat the map, you'll notice how more and more patient you'll become. Mentality plays a big role in self-discipline. It is very easy to feel good about how the game is going and just as easy to lose motivation and be a downer. I personally struggle with mentality problems when playing CSGO. I often easily lose motivation and get really negative about the match, but I'm working hard to improve myself. I do so by allowing myself to see the brighter side of the situation. For example, if we're getting stomped, I attempt to visualize how we can come back to win the game. I use the motivation of my teammates to build up the will to win. I attempt to motivate my teammates and hope that they can do the same. If you're able to change your mentality, everything will fall into place. Your ego, your patience, your awareness, your teamwork, your communication. Keep striving for positivity and you'll soon become smarter than you ever dreamed of. That's all for me for this video. Basically the gist is don't make irrational decisions, always think about each action and how it could affect the game. Keep every single piece of information in mind throughout the round. 
be conscious of where the enemy could be at all times, and of course, keep up a positive mentality. There's simply way too many points to cover in one video, so if I missed anything, make sure you leave a comment down below, and I might consider making a part 2 of this video. Remember to always communicate, work with your team, try not to panic, use your equipment, and most importantly, have fun. If you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please leave a like and click that share button, it would help me out a ton. If you're new here and like what you see, don't hesitate to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, be water my friends.